In this special video series, we bring to you a live depiction of laparoscopic RUNY gastric bypass surgery. The surgery is performed by Dr. Pradeep Chaube, Director, Max Institute of Minimal Access, Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, Max Super Speciality Hospital, New Delhi. Obesity has reached epidemic proportions in India in the 21st century with morbid obesity affecting 5% of the country's population. Recently, there has been an increase in incidence of childhood and adolescent obesity and importantly, these children remain obese as adults. Being obese is not just a cosmetic problem but puts one at a very high risk for a number of health problems like coronary heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, osteoarthritis, etc. In India, we have got obesity at a very, very young age and our main problem lies in the abdominal fat which we call uh, visceral fat and the visceral fat is a fat which is uh, the dangerous type of fat because this fat produces the problems of diabetes, it produces the problem of cardiac diseases and it produces problems related with the liver and other metabolic uh, conditions like high cholesterol levels. Bariatric surgery and surgery for obesity are mostly done laparoscopically today. Laparoscopic RUNY gastric bypass is currently one of the most commonly performed bariatric surgical procedures. Clinical research has shown this procedure to be the safest and most effective. There is a higher percentage of excessive weight loss with RUNY gastric bypass as compared to other purely restrictive bariatric procedures. Patient selection is an extremely important and vital aspect for this surgery. The patients who qualify for the laparoscopic RUNY gastric bypass include patients with morbid obesity that is body mass index BMI greater than 32.5 with comorbidities or BMI greater than 37.5 with or without comorbidities. Patients with type 2 diabetes and obesity not achieving recommended treatment targets with medical therapies, especially when there are other major comorbidities. Patients who have type 2 diabetes and a BMI of 35 or more. Patients with a BMI between 30 and 35 when diabetes cannot be adequately controlled by optimal medical regimen, especially in the presence of other major cardiovascular disease risk factors. The patients for whom this surgery, RUNY gastric bypass, would be contraindicated would be those with extremes of BMI less than 32.5 and greater than 65, extremes of age less than 18 and greater than 65, previous small bowel resection, previous multiple abdominal surgeries, inflammatory bowel disease, portal hypertension, high risk for general anesthesia. This is a young female, 25 years old, uh, a body mass index of 49 and uh, she is diabetic also. Her age is 25 years. We will be doing a, a gastric bypass laparoscopically, which is a gold standard treatment for uh, diabetic patients who are obese. During the gastric bypass procedure, the surgeon separates a very small pouch of the stomach from the rest, which now will be the only part of the stomach that receives food. This greatly restricts the amount of food you can comfortably eat and drink at one time. The small intestine is cut a short distance from the stomach and connected to the new pouch. Now, food and liquid will flow directly from the pouch into this part of the intestine, bypassing most of the stomach. The larger part of the stomach, however, continues to make digestive juices. So the part of the intestine that is attached to the stomach is reattached further down to the small intestine. Bypassing part of the intestine limits caloric absorption. 
patient position. The patient is placed in a split leg position with the knees slightly flexed and hip externally rotated. The operating room layout and relative positions of the surgeon, assistant and scrub nurse are as shown. The operation is performed under general anesthesia for achieving the necessary relaxation and sedation. Markings of the costal margins and the sites for port incisions are now done. In all bariatric surgeries, we have to take a fixed point and that is the xephoid and every port is measured from here. The first port marking is 18 cm from the xephoid just above the umbilicus. All other ports are introduced in the form of an arc at a distance of 18 cm from the xephoid. The second and third ports are marked 18 cm from the xephoid in the mid-clavicular lines on the left and right sides respectively. Another port is marked in the mid-clavicular line at the level of the umbilicus. All other ports which we put are as per the requirements of the surgery. First, uh, pneumoperitoneum will be created from the umbilicus. We use a close technique and that is Perez needle and we insufflate up to 20 millimeter of pressure. We have to wait uh, for a complete insufflation till the pressure reaches to more than 10 millimeter of abdominal pressure. In very, very obese patients, we may need uh, two insufflators so as to keep the abdomen insufflated. The first port is inserted into the abdomen and a diagnostic laparoscopy done with the help of the telescope by turning it all around the abdomen to make sure there is no other pathology that may have been missed during the previous investigations. The first part of the surgery is a jejuno-jejunostomy. Working ports are now introduced at their respective markings. The greater omentum is divided into two vertical halves, right two-third and left one-third. The ligament of treats is identified to locate the duodeno-jejunal junction. The proximal jejunum is divided 75 cm for patients with a BMI less than 50 or 100 cm for patients with a BMI greater than 50 from the ligament by means of a 60 mm linear endostapler white cartridge. This is the biliopancreatic limb. The rule limb is marked with an endoclip. This helps in identifying and making sure that we take a proper loop at the gastrojejunostomy. The very small little bleeding and oozing points should be handled in the initial stages because we want a complete hemostasis as these patients are on low molecular heparin. The mesentery is divided further using ultrasonic shears. The rule limb is measured distally to 100 centimeters for patients with a BMI less than 50 and 150 centimeters, for patients with a BMI greater than 50, a stay suture is placed to approximate the divided edge of biliopancreatic limb and rule limb side by side. Small entrotomies are made on both limbs. using ultrasonic shears or monopolar cautery hook. 
a side-to-side jejunojejunostomy is then created using 60 mm linear endostapler white cartridge. The second application of 60 mm linear endostapler white cartridge is performed in the opposite direction to create a wide anastomosis. The common entrotomy is closed by another application of 60 mm linear endostapler white cartridge. This is called the triple staple technique. Hemostasis is ensured and the jejuno jejunal mesenteric defect is closed with the continuous non absorbable suture. The next step of the operation is the creation of a gastric pouch. The patient is now placed in a steep reverse Trendlenburg position. A 5 mm self retaining liver retractor is used through a 5 mm epigastric incision to retract left lobe of liver. Belsi fat at the gastroesophageal junction and angle of his is mobilized to expose the left crust of diaphragm. The landmark to begin the dissection along the lesser curve is distal to the second vessel from gastroesophageal junction. A perigastric sharp dissection at this level is performed to create a retrogastric tunnel up to the lesser sac. A 60 mm linear endostapler blue cartridge reload is applied to transect the stomach transversely. It is important to ensure that the stomach is void of all tubes before transection. A 20 to 30 ml vertical pouch is created using two or three vertical applications of 60 mm linear endostapler blue cartridge towards the angle of his leaving a part of fundus at angle of his. The final step of this operation is the creation of a gastrojejunostomy. A gastrostomy is created using ultrasonic shears in the gastric pouch at the junction of horizontal and vertical staple lines. A 25 mm circular stapler, 3.5 mm staple height is used to create the anastomosis. The oval anvil attached to an orogastric tube is passed per orally by the anesthesiologist. The distal end of the orogastric tube is retrieved through the gastrostomy and brought out from the 10 to 20 mm port located in the left hypochondrium. Gentle traction is applied on the tube to ensure that the anvil is placed within the gastric pouch. A large entrotomy is created through the divided stapled end of the rule limb of the jejunum using ultrasonic shears. The left hypochondrial port is enlarged to introduce the circular stapler. The end of the stapler is placed in a disposable sterile sheath and introduced into the enterotomy of rule limb and advanced for about 10 cm. The spike of the circular stapler is perforated through the anti-mesentric border. The spike is connected into the mouth of anvil and locked in position. The stapler is fired to create the circular anastomosis. Anastomosis is checked for any active bleeding. The jejunal entrotomy is closed with a 60 mm linear endostapler white cartridge. Reinforcement sutures are placed with 20 vicryl at gastrojejunal anastomosis, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions to reduce the staple line tension. The staple line integrity is checked with a methylene blue test. Peterson's mesenteric defect is closed with continuous non absorbable sutures. A Jackson Pratt drain is placed posterior to the anastomosis. All 10 and 12 mm ports are closed under direct vision with a fascia closure needle. Hemostasis is confirmed and wounds are sutured. 
bariatric surgery and obesity surgery is a big blessings for our obese population uh, especially in india where we have got obesity at a very very young age and our main problem lies in the abdominal fat which we call uh, visceral fat so we are seeing more and more young obese persons who become diabetic and this situation clinically is known as diabetes which means that diabetes along with the obesity and these are the patients who are immensely benefited by the bariatric or surgical procedures which in these uh, patients have got very uh, strong metabolic outcomes most of these patients when they lose their weight uh, almost become non diabetic because the diabetes uh, is related with their weight